Hi, everybody. Lynn Burkhead with MajorLeagueFishing.com, sitting alongside Mr. Andy Montgomery, Major League Fishing Angler, here this week in northeastern Oklahoma at the first ever Geico Select. Yeah. And I tell you what, it's an exciting week because Major League Fishing has been really the hottest angling game in town, so to speak, over the last three or four years. And now it's growing. And Andy, when you got the invite to be a part of Major League Fishing, what were you thinking? Was it an automatic decision? Yeah, well, yeah, it was. Uh, it was pretty automatic because this is this is what I like. This is fishing in its purest form. You get out there and you gotta find them and catch them the fastest. It ain't about who shows up with more waypoints or who practiced thirty days before the off limits or whatever. You know, this is uh, this is the purest form of fish. We've heard it said many times, but it truly is the purest form of fishing, and it's probably the way our short sport should be played. You know, uh, I, I've heard several of you guys talk about that and that is one of the things that I have heard for years and years and years are people that will uh, almost pick on an angler and say well he does well but the reason he does well is for all the reasons you just said he either has a buddy or he has a team or he has waypoints or he's got all this information and if they had come to my lake and they didn't have all that stuff they wouldn't do what they do and you know what I've learned watching you guys do this is, yeah, they probably would do what they do because this is, as you said, it's pretty pure. Right. No practice, no information. Right. You sign an agreement you're not going to do any of that. And you come and fish literally by the seat of your pants. In fact, the last couple of years, you don't even know where you're fishing until you pull up into the parking lot. Right. That is pretty radical. Right. How do you deal with that as a professional angler? How do you have nothing to go on and go out and have to perform? Uh, with me, I just, um, like, you know, the first day I did it, I just, when, I, when we showed up to the lake, I took a look at the lake, and then immediately I went through, uh, you know, lakes that I'd fished in the past at different parts of the country that, that were similar. And, and that's what I based it on is uh, tried to find a lake that was similar that I had some experience on that I fished, you know, on a, on another major tour or something and, and just kind of rolled with my experience from, from that lake and carried it over to the lake that I was fishing. Well, you've been outstanding on that other tour, the FLW tour. And how is, and, and it's no different than the Bassmaster League or the PAA or uh, any of the thousands of weekend tournaments going around the country every weekend, it's those tournaments have been built on a model, and that model historically has been you catch the five best fish you can catch, you bring those to the weigh-in, you weigh them in. If one of them's dead, it's you're penalized, and then you let them go, and the guy with the most weight ultimately wins. This is a little different. Did you find it to be more different than you thought coming in? Not really. Um... Uh... I didn't because it's just the way I like to fish is, uh, you know, I like to fish by the seat of my pants and, and, and once I, you know, once I catch some fish or something on a certain thing, I like to ride and, and, and when I see that, you know, I can pull over and fish or whatever. So, uh, um, it was, it was fun, you know, not weighing in five and catching all you can catch really didn't change anything for me. I did the same thing I would if, if I would have, you know, had to bring in my biggest five. So. It didn't change my way of fishing. I'm not saying that you won't encounter a situation on major league fishing where you, you know, where you gonna have to change your way of fishing to compete. There may be a, you know, for instance, a lake that you get to and and you can tell it's got a lot of spotted bass that weigh a pound and a half or two pounds, versus going to fish for, you know, five or six largemouth that may weigh two and a half to three pounds. Where where in this deal, wherever fish counts, you're probably better off catching all the two pounders you can catch instead of instead of trying to catch five, two and a half, three pound large mile, well, versus right. in the five fish limit tournament, you're better off to go try to catch five fish for the total day. And then you, you're going to have your five bigger ones. If you only get five bites, they're going to weigh more than a guy that went out and caught 30 spotted bass. But mm -hmm. in this deal, you know, the 30 spotted bass is going to beat the five large mouth every time. That's just a, you know, just kind of a, for instance, you know, that could, could play out in the future on Major League Fishing. Definitely some strategy that can be different at times, but one thing that is certainly different at times, uh, and maybe all of the time, is Score Tracker Live. You, uh, the, the other tournament formats, there's nothing wrong with it. We've all played it. We're right, all going to continue right. to play them. Nothing wrong with the format at all. 
But Major League Fishing is different because they like not only seat of your pants fishing, they like in your face fishing, yeah. where it's not just you against the fish, but also you against your competitive angling cohorts. Right, right. And and to me, I like it. You know, a lot of guys don't like hearing what other guys are catching because, you know, they want to focus on their self. But, but I just try to use it for my advantage. If, if, if I hear the score tracker, you know, going off pretty good where a lot of other guys are catching when I'm not, I know I better change because they're biting and it's not just me where, for instance, if nobody's catching them, then I'm going to keep doing what I'm comfortable with and, you know, and, and hope that I, that I catch them. Fish feed at different periods of the day. I mean, it's obvious from the score tracker and, and a couple other tournaments I fished where it was live scoring. So, so when you hear that feeding going on, you know, you better, you better be doing the right thing and, and capitalize on that moment. So, so I like it, you know, I enjoy it. And then, uh, I just try to use it to my advantage instead of let it hurt me. And because it is something that starts with the uh, the official start and ends with the official end and counts everything in between, it's never really over until it's over. No. There are times in five fish tournaments where it's kind of over because a guy catches five giants right, and nobody's right, going right. to haul him down. In this in the round that you competed in, yeah, it was like while we can't give it away, it yeah. was literally like yeah. a minute or so to go when it was ultimately decided. Yeah, right, right. And it, it went down to the wire with, uh, you know, several of us having a chance to win, actually having a chance to win going into the last period. And, and, and you know, the guy that ended up winning, it was like 30 seconds left when he caught the winning fish. Is so. that exciting to you as a competitor that, you've always got a chance to come back in this deal. Yeah, it is. you know exactly where you stand. You know if you need to compete to to stay in the fourth to move on or, or if you or if you can go to the win. It just so happened that our deal, um, you know, without giving us the results away, it just so happened that, that there was there was four guys that was kinda you know, had, had separated themselves but but at the same time all four of them had a had a legitimate chance to win you know, going into the last 30 minutes of the competition. So uh, it was cool. It was definitely cool. Let me ask you one final question. Um, when you get on the water the next time, are you going to do anything different than you did the first time? I don't think so. I mean, I really feel like I fished a, a good day. Um, you know, I, did, I don't think I will. I mean, I'm, I'm really happy with the way the day went. So uh, um, I'm just going to do what I'm comfortable with and what my strengths are and hope it works out. Well, it's a pleasure to have Andy Montgomery as a part of Major League Fishing. We're glad to have you. And if you'd like to learn more about Andy or any of the other Major League Fishing competitors and how they play the game and how they fish for fish, go to MajorLeagueFishing.com.